Now let's quickly go through the actual algorithm which is used to uh, compute one number, which is called MAP score. You might have heard about that mean average precision, but it's a little complicated, uh, and I, I hardly doubt like, like any of uh, any one of you might know it. Some of you which are, who are doing research, you might be aware of this. So pay close attention like how uh, it's done. It's a very simple algorithm, but it, it's a little tricky. Okay, so now we have seen. You have the ground truths, which will be like a set of warning boxes. And for each warning box, you will have the class label. So that's category number one. Then you have a second category, which is your models prediction. Okay. So again, your model prediction will be like set of warning boxes and each warning box, your model will say it's a cat, it's a car or whatever category it is. So we start with those two sets. And what we do is the first step is we just sort like all the predictions based on the confidence score. Okay. So, and again, earlier, I think we were doing this just for one image. In this case, we will do this for the whole data set. You might have thousands of images. You will just sort all those. Okay. You sort the prediction warning boxes for all images according to the scores. And these scores is the confidence your model has on that prediction. For example, so this is like a sorted list and these are the detections. So these are just names. Don't worry about it. So these are just like acronyms given to each detection. You can use whatever name you want. So don't worry about the second column over here. And again, don't worry about the first column as well. This is just like name of your image. And for example, you had like some image, uh, which is named image five. You had some detection, which was named R. You could use any other name. And your model said there is some detection, some object present in that image with a confidence of 95%. And that's the reason like this is on the top row only because of this confidence score. All right, so that's the starting point. Now, once you have this uh, bonding box, what you will do is you will compute the intersection over union of this uh, bonding box with all the bonding boxes you have in your ground truth, right? And if there's a match, you will see like whether this bonding box is a true prediction or it's a false prediction. So once you have the intersection over union, you will see, okay, that's uh, greater than threshold or, threshold or not, greater than 0.5, right? And the class label should be correct. If that is the case, you have one true positive. And of course, you will have zero false positives because you only have one sample at this point, right? So these are the two columns which are computing whether this particular prediction was correct or not. Okay, so either this will be one, this will be zero, or this will be one, and this will be zero because your, your prediction can be either true positive or false positive. Now, this, these two columns are actually, again, true positive and false positive, but they are kind of accumulating these scores. Okay, so in this case, we have one true positive, so it's again one, because prior to this, we didn't have anything, and false positive is still zero, it will remain the zero. So using these true positive and false positive, not these scores, these are accumulated ones, you will compute your precision and recall. All right. So once you have that, then you, you do this like for all the possible locations uh, as you move down. Okay. So here you can see that, okay, the second one was a false positive. So your true positive remains the same. False positive becomes one because of this. Your precision will be half. And again, your recall will be this. So you keep computing precision recall for these accumulated true positives and false positives. Now, these are the numbers which we are going to use to compute the mean average precision score. And let's see how, how that's done. Okay, so this is called average precision. And the idea is you do this for like a one class at a time and you will have like similar curve for like all the classes. You just compute the average and that average is called mean average precision. Okay, so let's see how this is done you you have like one point here right? this is one and this is uh, 0 0.06 you just plot this point in this chart so let's say your first point was at this location because your precision was pretty high and your recall was like 0 0.06 right and then you plot like the second point which is again your uh, precision was 0 0.5 recall was 0 0.06 this is your third point fourth point, fifth point, sixth point, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, ten point. So these are actually just the points we have in this table. So these are like the x, y coordinates you can see. All right. So once you draw that, you will see like it's kind of having this kind of trend because initially your precision might be high, but eventually it will go down. And what you do is you you try to fill like uh, the gap because sometimes it may happen that you're starting from very low precision, then you go high. But what you do is you kind of backtrack. You just ignore that. Okay, so focus on this dashed red line. Red line. So whenever you are actually dipping, your performance is going down. You pick like the next highest performance and fill that gap. So you don't worry about this. And this will give you these kind of bonding boxes. Okay, you just ignore these lines, these steps. And this is going you going to give you like some kind of area where you can sum like the uh, area A1, area A2, area A3, and this A4. And the, the sum of uh, all these, uh, area of all these rectangles, again, normalized, is called your average precision. The higher the number is, the better the algorithm is. And if you think about this, we have seen, I think, recall precision co uh, curve earlier as well. Uh, a better algorithm will be when you have high precision and you have a very high recall, which means that Whatever your network predicts, it's almost correct, and it's actually able to predict all the possible detections you have in your in your data. Okay, so that's how you compute a mean average position. You just average your, uh, across all the classes.